Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. Alright, so we've got this big ominous pit here, which is going to lead us to the boss of the Great Bay Temple, so let's be stylish and jump in. Here we are with the gargantuan masked fish, Gorg. Now, a lot of people I hear describe this boss as being hard. Annoying, maybe, but I don't know if I'd go as far as to call it hard. What you want to do is shoot him whenever you can see him, and that'll cause him to sort of get stunned. Then switch over to our Zora mask, swim up next to him, and hit him with the electricity, and then quickly get out of there. Now, we're going to have to make our way back pretty quickly, and you want to do the whole jumping out of the water thing to get back on the platform. Now, at this point, it's pretty much just uh, wash, rinse, repeat, really. I mean, you can tell where he is by the bubbles. He will ram into the platform and try to knock you into the water. If you stay into the water for too long, he will um, gulp you up and do, like, I think it's like three hearts of damage. So that can get somewhat damaging, but as long as you just don't panic, you have a lot more time than you think. You can pretty much just, you know, go in and out pretty quickly as long as you're somewhat decent at controlling Sora Link, which I guess could sort of be the downfall for a lot of people because it is... Wow, uh, somewhat hard to do. Um, he also does that from time to time. It's sort of hard to tell when it's coming. Uh, so let's go ahead and shoot him again here. And jump down and pretty much repeat this same process. Now, I think with this one, once we get the hit in, um, yeah, you can see this little scene's going to take over. And this scene is really cheap, actually, because it stops you from swimming. So now we're going to have to get our bearings again, and we're actually going to swim towards him for a little bit. And have to jump our way out from here, which of course you can't really do because you don't know where you are. I almost always get hit on that one just because that scene interrupts you. But, um, oh wow, looks like it actually only does two hearts of damage, so I guess that wasn't too bad. But, alright, so let's go ahead and jump out before he can eat us again. And now, once you're here, he does sort of enter another phase, but um, it's really just more of the same. He's probably going to ram here, so I'm going to wait, I think. Um, okay, well, he's just kind of going back. Oh, get in there. <laughs> Alright, so now we know he's over here, so we can uh, take aim and fire. Go down. Electricity once again. I think he only needs one more hit at this point. Um, the little guys you can kill with electricity, just like the skullfish, and of course I messed this up. And... Wow, I did actually make it, alright. Looks like he doesn't really try to eat you that much during that phase, uh, so I guess that works. It doesn't really look like those did any damage either, I'm still at two and a half missing. All right, so let's see where he's at. He's, oh, he knocked me in. All right. And this means he's probably going to get a chop at me. Yep, there he goes. You get a nice view at it there. All right, so uh, let's let him spit us out here. Yeah, you get a little timer if you're high on the lake because you're drowning too. All right, so let's just make our way back out. There's really no need to rush because he probably won't try to eat me again. There we go. All right, so let's get back in the middle. It's a good idea to stay in the middle until you find him so you know exactly what he's doing. Let's look for the bubbles. No. There he is. All right, so let's let him do his thing here. Okay, yeah, it was a ram. I was afraid he might try to jump over the middle. All right, so let's aim and fire. There we go. This should be the last hit, I think. So let's dive in and do it. Yep, and there we go. As you can see, he's going to flop around here. And there we go, that's it for Georg. And if you look at my health, I lost four and a half. You know, that's basically nothing. So, um, yeah, the boss, it's not hard, really, I wouldn't say. It's just kind of annoying, and if you don't really have a good strategy, he can uh, take up quite a bit of your time. But either way, we get the heart container he leaves behind. We are now up to 16 hearts. We can go into this blue little portal here, and we have seized Georg's remains. You've just freed the innocent spirit that this dark mask had kept in prison within the body of evil Georg.
Hey, listen, we want you to lend us your power. If you just leave things as they are, something terrible will happen to this world. Surely you're the only ones who can stop it. That's what Tail was trying to tell us. Help... our... friend. I get it. We have to help the last one. Then promise us this. You'll cooperate with us. Now I can continue resting in peace. I too must abide the laws of ancient times and again merely watch for my deep slumber. But the evil that haunts this land has not completely vanished, Link. I shall depart after enjoying Lulu's voice a bit longer. I think the gods can permit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, so we've beat Great Bay Temple and saved Great Bay, even though it doesn't really look like there was too much wrong with this place. I mean, it's not really that different, but um, Lulu's pretty much been returned back to normal, so I guess that was kind of the main objective, really. But and let's head back in now as Zora Link. And as we do so, we can actually see that up on the stage is actually the Zora Band, the Indiegogo. So since we're a member, I think we should uh, join them on stage here. So let's do that and run into the wall. That works. So yep, yeah, you can see them all standing here. Let's talk to Lulu. Mikau, you came back safely. That's good. I was surprised when my voice turned that lonely island into a turtle. But that song you played for me, my mother used to sing it often, long ago. Those eggs were laid to remind me of that. That song was from when I was a very young child, so I had forgotten it. I've put you through some horrible experiences, Macau, but I'm all better now. Well, the town's concert is very soon. Let's start our rehearsal. Alright, so there we go. There's that song that we had that jam session with, remember? So, uh, let's talk to Lulu again. I guess being able to sing is a wonderful thing after all. Yep, pretty much. What about you, drummer man? And with that, we're all ready. I can't wait for the town's concert. Wait, that's it? That's all you're going to practice? Man, <laughs> gonna be a boring concert if you ask me. What's up, Evan? I'm glad I got this new song done in time for the concert. You did great, Macau, and even without any practice. You really are a musical genius. Yeah, I know it, man. What about you, Japos? I think you're the coolest guy in this band. Hey, Macau, that song Evan wrote sounds just like the one we played at our jam session, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. Hmm. But, yep, yeah, so the Zora Band's all back together in their practice for the town concert and everything, so that's awesome. Alright, now, before we reset time, there are a couple things, of course, that we want to do now that we have uh, cleared out the dungeon and saved the area, pretty much as per usual. So we're going to head back out here, and uh, pretty much back to the shore in this area. So let's swim back through and make sure not to get eaten by the like-like. That would be uh, terrible at this stage. And then make our way back through. Got some skellfish to worry about if we want, but uh, I don't care. I'd rather just do this. Alright, and then once we get here, you can see there is a series of rocks that's sort of leading out this way. Uh, we're going to take it this time, because remember, we still need to return the uh, 15 stray fairies that we picked up. So in order to do that, we're going to head out this way. Um, now, once we get here, there are some palm trees on some islands, which we're going to have to obviously use the hookshot for. Let's make our way out there. Looks like Tattle's fluttering out there. I wonder if he could use the Scarecrow song there, too. I don't really know. Oh, okay. Oh, no, these guys again. you got to be kidding. All right. There you go. Shoot him in the back. That works. <laughs> Those guys cause me all kinds of trouble on Ocarina of Time. All right, so let's make our way back out through the trees. And we're just about there. You can see there's a little uh, boulder blocking something up there, which is obviously where we're going to have to go. So let's jump our way up there. And blow this thing up, either with bombs, which we do have 15 of, since we just randomly pick some up inside the temple. Or we can use the blast mask, which I find to be a little bit quicker and easier. So now once we head inside, you can see this is the Fairy's Fountain of Great Bay. We can walk forward and return them. <laughs> I 
All right, so the bluish, purplish hair fairy comes out. I'm not entirely sure which color to call that. Oh, courageous young one, I am the great fairy of courage. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. As thanks, I shall lend you my strength. And there we go! Our defense has been strengthened. Enemies now do half as much damage as before. Come see me whenever you are overcome by weariness. And Link waves. <laughs> so yeah, we just got our double defense upgrade, something we didn't obtain till near the end of the game in Ocarina of Time, you know, pretty much right outside the final dungeon. So um, we do get it a little bit earlier here, which is nice. It definitely serves a lot more uh, purpose, and I think this is uh, almost definitely the best upgrade you're going to get through the Great Fairies. So if you're going to choose one temple to get the upgrade for, I would definitely choose Great Bay. Um, all right, so now let's see. We are going to get out our ocarina and actually warp, but we're not going to go far because we do still want to stay inside the area. Um, it's just quicker to get back this way because we're going to warp to the Great Bay Coast area. All right, and then once we get back here, there's actually a mini game we're going to be playing. But in order to play the minigame, the guy is only going to be open from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we're going to have to advance time a little bit with the Song of Double Time here. Alright, well, it's not quite 7 a.m. yet, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to get out there and everything. So I think it's safe to go ahead and go. Now we're going to head back up to this section one more time. Uh, remember, Pinnacle Rock is over there, so this is pretty much where we're heading. Um, if we go over here, we can see this little sign with a boat, and it says, The Fisherman's Jumping Game. Please ride the boat to the Fisherman's Island to inquire about play. Well, all right, let's do it. So we hop on the boat, and it's going to automatically take us out, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can see there's a tree there on these islands. This is the island we're going to be heading for. Things are going to sort of magically appear on them as we get closer. Um, but we're going to have to use the hook shot to get on that tree. I just kind of want to keep looking this way so we can see everything appear. Whoa, look at that guy. <laughs> so, All right, so as we head our way over here, let's go ahead and get equipped. And start looking out this way. This boat could move a little bit faster, if you ask me, but I guess that's just how it goes. All right, so let's get up onto the tree here and talk to this guy. I'm pretty sure this is the same guy who wanted the uh, the female pirate picture who I swore we would never talk to again, but I guess we have to. Now that the seas are back to normal, I've started a little business aimed at tourists. If you pay 20 rupees, I'll invite you to a jumping game that has a really big prize. If you're up for it, go to that island in the center. Well, all right, let's do it. Oh, you're up for it. Now then, I'll explain the rules, so listen carefully. I'm going to light the torches on each of the surrounding four islands in a particular order. Jump to the island that has the lit torch. If you can jump to it before the torch goes out, you'll get one point. If you get 20 or more points within the time limit, you'll get a big prize, but it'll cost you 20 rupees for one try. How about it? Will you give it a try? Yeah, let's do it. Great, in that case, I'll start. Alright, so yeah, as this guy said, he's going to light some torches on these islands, and we have to jump to the island where the torch is lit. Um, it can be a little bit tricky, though, because the camera is not necessarily the best at viewing all of the islands at once. So, we're going to kind of have to do a little bit of work, and also, it's very, very easy to fall off of this. So, okay, it is this one over here. Um, you do really want to take it slow, though. I almost fell off there. That was really close. Um, you do have two minutes, which is a lot more time than you think, actually. So, as long as you're up to ten by the time you reach the one-minute mark, you're good. Uh, if you want to be somewhat safe, it might be a good idea to sort of use Z-targeting to always line up your jump to the front of the screen in order to make sure you're the safest you can be, pretty much. Um, so that's always good. You can see we're already at 10, and we're not quite at one minute left yet, so that's always good. Um, but it is good to take this slow and methodical, otherwise you could very easily jump off, and if you jump off, you instantly just fail the game, even if you've gotten 20 points. So um, that's also another clue that you should probably stop once you reach 20 and not try to jump anymore. So, all right, we're up to 15, and we just now passed the one-minute mark, so we're definitely in good shape here. Let's look to the left. Then to the right this time. All right, just two more left. Looks like this one appears next. 
and then finally this one over here, and that marks point number 20. Like I said, once you reach this point, stop and let the time run out, because you've already won, you don't get anything extra for getting more points, so you pretty much just want to sit here for another 30 seconds or so. Alright, so we won, alright, that's it. Uh-oh, that was a little too easy. Oh well, here's your prize. And of course, for that, we get a piece of heart. And we've also assembled a new heart container, so look at that. We are up to 17 hearts. Feel like we're at the end of the game yet? I mean, look at this. We've got almost all our items, almost all our masks, and almost all our heart containers. So it is definitely going pretty quickly. I mean, we're getting somewhat close, actually, so that's good. Alright, so now, um, real quick, I'm, I know I'm at like 15 minutes, but I went ahead and started this side thing, so I kind of want to get it finished. Um, remember, we've been dealing with the frogs sort of off and off. We dealt with the one that was at um, the Mountain Village, and then we freed the one in Great Bay Temple after defeating the Gecko. Now, there are three more that we need to take care of, one of which is here in Clock Town. You may remember it. You've definitely seen it before. Uh, we're going to deal with that first, then there's one in Southern Swamp, and then there's also another one inside of Woodfall Temple, which is probably the most annoying one to get to. Aside from the one in Great Bay Temple, of course, but... Alright, so if we walk down here, the frog is right here in the laundry pool. So let's put on Don Jero's mask and talk to him. And he'll pretty much say the same thing, it's been so long. Um, spring's finally come, that look, it's true, and he'll go. So that's pretty much all what, what they all say. So now that we've gotten that one, we can warp our way back out and go to the Southern Swamp. Alright, so we're in Southern Swamp. You can see where I am on the map. Basically just follow the trail of lily pads leading out from the tour center. Once you get over here, there's a log you can climb on and you can see the next frog is sitting over here on it. So let's put on Don Jero's mask and talk to him. He'll say exactly the same thing. So then he will poof and go to the mountain. Now, we've got to get the final one, which is inside of Woodfall Temple. Obviously a little bit more, uh, more work to get to. But now that we've actually picked up, you know, a, a lot more equipment, we can actually get there quite a bit quicker. So we're going to have to soar there. Alright, and now we're back in the temple. Um, I went ahead and skipped that first room. It's just a bunch of Deku flowers. You can get through it with no problems. Now, in order to get back to the Gecko room quickly, you may have completely forgot where that is, since it has been a long time since we've been in here. I mean, <laughs> it feels really strange being back here again. But um, we can pretty much skip most of this dungeon now that we have our equipment upgrades. If we get out the bow, which we actually picked up in here, you can remember there's this golden eye switch. The Gecko Room is actually right up there. It's in that upper northern room. So doing that will cause the flower to go up and down, and then obviously we can use that in order to get into the room. So that's what we're going to do. And then we get to defeat this Gecko one more time. Remember, this is the guy who turns into the frog. Of course... A little more equipment does make this go quicker as well. We can use the Gilded Sword to finish that phase in one shot. This one's still going to take a little while, but if you want, um, you can use Fire Arrows, which will deal more damage. It'll only take two shots to kill him, so that'll speed things up a little bit. There we go, and two shots will take care of him. He'll fall down, be defeated, and then turn into the final frog that we're looking for. And then, of course, the doors will open. You can get the boss key if you want. I don't know, just to take it out as a souvenir. So let's talk to him, and this is going to mark the uh, final of, I think it's five, that are in the choir, so that's good. Now, in order to get out quickly, we can play the Song of Soaring. It does work inside of uh, dungeons, but it only sends you back to the entrance. So uh, we're going to have to play it a couple times here, but we're going to go back to the Mountain Village real quick. Alright, then once we're here, we are just about done. We can make our way over to this side. You can see all five of the frogs are now sitting here on their lily pads. So if we go over and talk to them again... Well, if it isn't the great Don Jero, shall we sing once again? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Look at Link's conducting over there, that's so weird. The conducting was spectacular, and all of our members rose to the occasion. This is how deeply we were moved by your spectacular conducting. Oh, come on, I wasn't that good, but yeah, we're going to get a piece of heart for doing that, so there we go. And we are now done gathering all the frogs, and that should also be the last time we're going to have to defeat Goat and make all this springtime again, so that is good. Now that we have done that, um, we have pretty much done all the stuff that we wanted to do after finishing Great Bay, so it's pretty much time to uh, reset and start fresh on a new cycle. But obviously, um, I'm not going to do that right now. We are going to end the video. And uh, next time, we're actually going to start taking steps towards entering the next area in the game. So um, that should be pretty cool. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.